Eyes allow visualization of the world by receiving and processing the energy of light as it enters the eye. This light interacts with the structures and nerves of the eye to create images. Adjustments via the muscles connected to the lens, ciliary bodies, and muscles that make up the iris are stimulated by several nerves. This is known as the pupillary light reflex. In this video, we will learn the assessment of pupillary reflex in critically ill patients along with types of abnormal pupillary reflexes and its clinical significance, so let's get started. First of all, let's understand the basic anatomy and physiology of vision. How do we see and what happens and light enters in our eyes? Light passes into the eyes through the cornea which is also called windows of the eyes, and then through anterior chamber, into the pupils, the round opening, in the center of the iris. The iris, which are a flat, colored, ring-shaped membrane behind the cornea of the eyes, may dilate, or constrict to determine how much light gets to the lens. Then, the lens moves light through the clear cavity called the vitreous and focuses it on the retina. The retina then converts this light energy into electrical impulses, and passes it through the optic nerve also called the second cranial nerve. These impulses then travel through the optic nerve into the primary visual cortex, which is located in the most posterior portion of the brain's occipital lobe. While it may sound like a lengthy process, but takes only about 13 milliseconds. Now, we know the physiology, let's dive into the procedure to derive pupillary reflex. In the critical care unit, pupillary light reflex is used to assess brainstem function. Abnormal pupillary light reflex can be found in optic nerve injury, oculomotor nerve damage, brain stem lesions, such as tumors, and medications like barbiturates. To perform the procedure, you will need a pocket pen light, that will be enough. The room lights should be dim, barely allowing you to see the iris and pupil. Keep the transilluminator ready and prepare the patient emotionally by explaining what are you going to do and what are the intended benefits of this test. Encourage patients to relax and alleviate their anxiety, if any. Gently point the focal light into one eye, this is known as the direct pupillary light reflex. Then, withdraw the light for a few seconds, followed by stimulating the same eye again but this time observe the indirect, or consensual, PLR in the opposite eye. It may be helpful to have the nurse control the light stimulus while you observe the unstimulated eye. Pupillary light reflexes are measured based on a 0 to 4 plus gradient that considers the magnitude and speed of the light response. A normal, healthy adult patient is expected to have a 4 plus response, which indicates a brisk, large response. A 3 plus grading indicates a moderate response, 2 plus is a small, slowed response, 1 plus represents a tiny, slash just visible response, and a 0 indicates unresponsive pupils. Commonly, Clinicians document pearl saying the pupils are equal, round, and reactive to light or pearl, pupils equal and reacting to light. In standard clinical testing conditions, the diameter of the pupils will usually range from 2 to 5 millimeters. Per decade of aging that occurs, there is a 0.3 millimeters decrease in the standard pupil diameter that has been associated with iris stiffening. In this slide, we have explained different types of pupils' responses and associated dysfunction. In cases of unilateral dilated pupils, there will be third cranial nerve compression. If we found bilateral dilated pupils, it will be most likely a midbrain lesion. Irregular pupils indicates orbital trauma, whereas conjugate gaze deviation indicates a frontal lobe lesion. Small or pinpoint suggest a pontine injury or opiate administration. Pupillary response to bright light evaluates cranial nerves 2 and 3 and should be absent in both eyes. Most pupils in brain death are non-reactive and mid-position. Round, oval, irregular, or dilated pupils are compatible with brain death, however, provided that they are not reactive. Although many drugs can affect pupil size, the response to light should be preserved.